Um, Heather Shenna from Cross Junction, Virginia. Eric Shenna, Cross Junction, Virginia. And why are you here today at the Reason Rally? Um, I'm really just tired of hiding. I'm tired of trying to make other people happy and, you know, sacrifice my own happiness. So I think it's important to come out. I'm just here to assert my First Amendment rights. You know, it's freedom of uh, religion also means freedom from religion, too. Welcome to the Infidel, the news for those of us who have supposedly chosen hell over heaven, the news for the damned. A Florida teacher convinces her students to cast out demons by cutting themselves. Danielle Harkins, a 35-year-old mother of two, is considered by many to be a good teacher. According to Carolyn Chance, the administrator of the family centre where she's employed, Harkins is both intelligent and skilled, but her condition seems to have changed not long after her divorce. Harkins started to take on extreme religious beliefs and even gave supernatural prognosis to people around her. She said, I didn't have any demons, said Lisa Cope, one of her neighbours. Then things became even more bizarre. Eventually, concerned parents called the police following an alleged incident where Mrs. Harkins helped some of the kids get rid of demons by cutting themselves. She first took them to a remote place by the sea in Pinellas County, a suburb of Tampa, Florida. She then allegedly told them to cut themselves. Afterwards, she tried to cauterize the cuts with a cigarette lighter or a heated key. When that didn't work, she switched to pouring perfume on a wound and set it on fire. One of the six children involved in the incident immediately sent a text message to one of his friends, who then told his parents. They in turn advised the authorities. Daniel Harkins is accused of both aggravated child abuse and child abuse. While she couldn't make bail, she is waiting for her trial in jail. Clashes erupt between secular and Islamic Tunisians. In Tunisia, the Inada party has led the Tunisian government in a collaboration with two secular groups ever since the Arab Spring movement that overthrew President Zin al Abidin Ben Ali in 2011. But a year later, the moderate Islamist party is faced with a delicate free speech issue. Emboldened by their newfound liberated voices, secularist artists have been creating and displaying art which is enraging hardline Tunisian Islamic groups. For example, an art display in the city of La Masa was vandalised because of such works as a portrait of the name of God written with dead insects. Such exhibits are enraging the Salafis, a puritanical Islamic sect which had previously agreed to peacefully push for greater role in Islam and Sharia in the Tunisian constitution. Now they insist that the art is inspiring them to violence and radicalizing them to the point of joining forces with Al-Qaeda. Other violent clashes have recently erupted including setting on fire a labour union headquarter and blocking streets and transit trams. Salafi clerics declared that while they would prefer peaceful interaction with the secularists, they draw the line at actions which they believe humiliate Islam. The US Supreme Court and a student's free speech rights. In the 1969 case of Tinker v. Des Moines Independent Community School District, the US Supreme Court set a confusing two-tiered precedent that students' free speech rights are not shed when they enter the classroom door. However, the judges also maintained that school administrators retain authority to restrict activities that might cause a substantial disruption to the school's primary mission of education. Last year, lower courts rendered their decision in two lawsuits which have come to be known as the Jesus Pencil case and the Candy Cane case. Both involved Texas school officials who barred Christian students from handing out religiously themed items on school grounds. 
The courts determined that the students' rights had been denied, but refused to hold individual school officials liable for incorrectly applying the law. Last month, the Supreme Court refused to hear arguments challenging last year's decision, thus finally setting a precedent as to whether an institution or its administrators is responsible when a student's free speech rights are denied. The judge's answer? Not the administrators. Atheist Roundtable, a gathering place for rational people. <laughs> Funny pictures and videos! <laughs> Profound atheist quotes. The religious going crazy. The latest news. World domination. Casual discussions. Baby eating. <laughs> the ultimate forum for a lively dialogue. Come join the fun at atheistroundtable.com.